These are the bones of Lucy, the single most famous hominin skeleton in the world. One of the reasons why Lucy is so famous is because many scientists believe that she is our ancestor. Her species, Australopithecus afarensis, is thought of as the link which connects man to the apes. But as creationists, we know that the Bible paints a very different picture of human origins. Man is a direct creation of God in the beginning. He did not evolve from the apes. So who is Lucy? And could she really walk upright, as they claim? To answer those questions, we need to look at some of Lucy's bones. So let's begin with her scapula. The scapula or shoulder blade is the bone off of which your arm hinges. And it has a small smooth portion that we call the glenoid fossa. And that's where it fits together with your arm bone. Now, this glenoid fossa can be oriented in different ways. In humans, it's more sticking out to the side because our arm bone simply needs to go like that. In apes, however, they are putting their arms above their head quite a bit more often. And so as a result, their glenoid fossa points upwards so that their arms can go up above their head more easily like that. Well, as it turns out, Lucy's glenoid fossa was oriented upwards like a chimpanzee's. And this means that she was probably climbing. The shape of Lucy's ribcage can also tell us about how she moved. When we reconstruct all of these fragments of her ribs, what we find is that she had a very cone-shaped ribcage. Down at the bottom, it was very wide, and then it got narrow towards the top. That's different from our ribcage, which is about as wide at the bottom as it is at the top. Now, this is something that we also see in animals like chimpanzees, and this is connected to the shoulder blades. They don't want their shoulder blades sticking way out to the sides of their body. They want them more closer towards the middle while they have their arms above their heads like this. Lucy's finger bones also tell us that she was climbing. When we look at the individual phalanges, they're curved. And that's something that we see in animals like chimpanzees and gorillas. It's a result of tree climbing. Grabbing branches places stress on either side of the finger bones, meaning that over time, they will develop a curve. However, other parts of Lucy's skeleton seem to tell a different story. Take, for example, her lumbar vertebrae. When we look at them, what we see is that they display lumbar wedging. One side of the vertebrae is shorter than the other, making it look wedge-shaped. Our vertebrae also display lumbar wedging, and this allows us to have a curve down in our lower back. If you feel your back, you have a little area there called the small of your back where it sticks in a little bit. And this is because of your lumbar curve. Your vertebrae form this nice little arch right here. And that arch serves as a spring. It kind of cushions your steps as you walk, allowing you to be a more efficient upright walker. Interestingly, babies aren't born with this. Only as they begin to walk do they actually develop this feature. Lucy's pelvis is also human-like in some respects. When we look at a human pelvis, it's kind of squat and broad and our hip bones curve around in the front. Whereas when we look at a chimpanzee pelvis, it's very tall and their hip bones kind of stick just straight out. Well, Lucy's is more similar to ours than it is to a chimpanzee pelvis. For one thing, we can see that it's shortened. For example, look at this sacrum. This sacrum has five different parts to it, five different vertebrae. Our sacrum also has five vertebrae. But when we look at a chimpanzee, it has six vertebrae. Lucy's femur, or her thigh bone, can also give us some information as well. Scientists have CT scanned the bone, so you can look at it in cross-section. And what they found is that this little part here, called the femoral neck, has an interesting pattern of bone distribution. Now, we have to think of our bones as living things, because inside of our bodies, they are. Our body constantly changes our bones based on the amount of stress we put on them. So they can add more bone, making it thicker and stronger, or take some bone away, making it thinner and weaker. Well, as it turns out, in our bodies, we have to have a lot of bone on the bottom of our femoral neck here. Why is that? Well, because this bone fits into our hip socket just like this. And all of the weight of our upper body goes right down onto this little part, which places a lot of stress right here. And as a result, our bone remodels and it puts a whole bunch of thick bone on the bottom here so that it can handle all that weight. 
Well, as it turns out, when we CT scan Lucy's bone, what we found is that sure enough, down at the bottom of this femoral neck, the cortical bone, that thick outer layer, is very thick compared to the top. And that's different from what we see in a chimpanzee. Chimpanzees just have a uniform distribution of cortical bone all the way around. So that tells us that Lucy was balancing her weight like we do, on two legs. So how was Lucy moving? Some of her anatomy seems to suggest that she was climbing the trees, and some that she was walking on the ground like we do. Well, some people think that those two things are contradictory, but the truth is that they aren't. Lucy was a master of both. She could walk efficiently on the ground and climb in the trees. So how can we understand Lucy's ability to walk upright if she isn't our ancestor? Well, barominological studies of Lucy and her kin have shown that they are too different from humans to be our ancestors. Instead, they seem to be their own created kind. God may have created them as upright walking apes in the beginning, and they lived alongside of humanity for thousands of years before they finally went extinct after the flood. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe.